Hello, uh, just a friendly reminder before we start. I'm definitely not an expert at economics. Um, I've only ever had a middle school, middle school education on that. So at some point uh, while I'm talking, if you ever feel like hmm, I don't agree with this person or maybe he's just spilling out bullshit, um, then it's probably because I'm wrong and it's probably because I'm not an expert. But regardless, I find this topic to be very interesting to think about and to talk about, which is why I am sitting in front of my mic and talking about it right now, regardless of my possibly limited knowledge on the topic. So whenever you feel like you disagree, because this is this topic is highly opinionated, so if you ever have a disagreement, that's totally fine and understandable. And you can even click off the video if you want to. So I want to start by talking about society. What is society? We live in a society now and and a society has rules and these rules tells us what is supposed to happen, what goes where and how this works and how that works and why you should do this and why you shouldn't do that. Now of course there are people that have a control over how society functions, have a control over the rules of the system and the people that have that control definitely they will use that in order to benefit themselves. Now, who are these people that I'm talking about? They are not the government. They are not people like us, but rather they are the people that control these very big and successful companies and corporations. Well, firstly, why are they in control in the first place? And that's because well, as, as it turns out, they really do have a big influence on people and how society functions. And secondly, they benefit from having that power and control over the system. And what is this benefit that I'm talking about? Well, it's money. Money is possibly the single most powerful driving factor that exists in today's modern world and these corporations they benefit from the existence of a society because they can make money off of that they can make a profit so they would like to keep society sustaining and they would like to have a certain degree of control over that now just think about it for a second uh, if society were to collapse, if the rules of society weren't there, then all these companies and corporations would just collapse. So it's really important for them to keep society in check so that they can make more money. Basically, that's the gist of it. Now, I'm not saying whether it's true or whether it's false, and that's because I don't have the right nor do I have the knowledge to determine that for certain and all I'm saying is that at the very least it is a possibility that is worth exploring even if this statement turns out to not be true. In any case uh, this topic I believe has a lot to bring on the table and that's because there's many ideas and implications when we delve deeper into this uh, sort of possibility that we're exploring here. Now, what exactly do these big companies do in order to control society and help them 
earn more money? Well, it happens slowly through the normalization of attitudes or behaviors that tend to increase the spending of people. Uh, now, when people spend more on things, that in turn helps the companies to earn more money. And how do they do this? Well, it happens through advertising. You know, buy one get one twenty percent off, and it pushes people towards a more materialistic mindset. But then again, still I can hear some of you saying, "But advertising, it isn't really that effective, is it? Only a couple percent of people actually click on those advertising, and only fewer of those people actually、uh, end up buying the things." And maybe because of that, we're just overhyping this statement or this possibility. But、uh, you have to understand that these big companies they have control over a lot of things, and that includes what gets shown on TV, the newspapers, magazines, and what gets put on the internet. And they also have、uh, control over things like research. Now the thing is, when you think of advertising,、uh, you're only thinking of just the regular ads that gets put on billboards, TV commercials, the annoying ads on the internet. But actually,、uh, advertising can come in very many subtle forms, like research, for example. If a certain piece of research is published. Uh, and these big companies have the power to spread that research and publicize it even more. Like, for example, this new finding shows that Apple has antioxidants or whatever anti-carcinogen. You you can live ten percent longer when you eat apples. And what happens after that is the sales in apples increases. Now that. Is also a form of advertising because you're convincing people to buy more apples. If research shows that oh this battery is ten percent more efficient than these other brands of batteries, then more people will buy that battery instead. So research is also a subtle form of advertising. So do the things that gets aired onto the news,、uh, onto newspapers and magazines. Uh, so sometimes you might be affected by advertising, advertising without even knowing that you are affected by ad- advertising because it is really subtle and hidden, and you may not even be aware of these sorts of things. Well, we we can agree on the fact that、uh, advertising has a bigger impact than we. Regularly or normally, think that it does. I'd like to、uh, further develop this idea, and to do that, I'm gonna mention a saying. I don't really know where it came from, but yeah, I'm just gonna say it anyway.、Uh, some people might say that Coca-Cola is the product. Supermarkets are the sellers, and we are the buyers. But other people say that we are the product. The seller is the media, and the buyer is Coca Cola. Now, just think about it. Isn't it awesome how we can view things one way and in another way, which also makes sense. The roles of buyer and product. I mean, the roles of, yeah, the roles of buyer and product are switched. Now think about the second view for a couple of seconds.、Um, Coca Cola. They're paying media companies. They're paying the people that work in television, in radio, in, in,、uh, just. Media people in general,、uh, so that the media people can then、uh, 
attempt to convince as much people as possible in order to buy Coca-Cola. So in a sense, Coca-Cola are buying、uh, people that have been indoctrinated by the media, and the media hands those people over to Coca-Cola in exchange for money, and in that way, Coca-Cola builds its consumer base that way. And this again is done through advertising. Now, if you think about the first view of things, the one where we are the buyers and Coca-Cola is the product,、uh, that first view is actually just the second view, but in disguise. If you think about it, the supermarkets themselves are advertisement. Like just think about it. When you walk into a supermarket, you're gonna see shelves that are normal, and then suddenly you look over to the shelf that sells Coca-Cola, and it's all colorful, and it has words、uh, written on it, and it's just like like some clickbait stuff that、uh, forces people to look into that direction. So that they are more willing to buy that product. Sometimes you have TV screens or a salesperson standing standing next to the shelves, and they talk about how good the product is. So that in itself is a form of advertisement. When you walk to a supermarket, when you have all these products there, they're all all of these products. They are being advertised. Towards you, and that happens through a nice shelf, a nice, even like the position of the product on the supermarket, like itself, the physical location of where the shelf is,、uh, that also influences whether you buy this product or that product, and that is all made in order for you to buy certain products more through these advertising. Consumer something blah 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 tactics, so supermarket is just like a big billboard. Like this product is nice, this product is nice, this product is cheap. Why don't you go and buy these things? So when you walk into the supermarket with the intent of buying one item, you may come out with two or three instead, and that's because of advertising. So the supermarket is. The supermarket plays the role of the media in trying to convince people to buy more things. The first view is just a different way of representing the second view. So, in actuality, the whole world works through the second view, and it's just that we, and it's just that、uh, we naively think of it in the form of the first view instead. We think that oh, we're just buying a product, but in the end, we're being influenced to buy products、uh, more often than we realize. But it it doesn't just end there. There's a lot more to talk about. Actually,、uh, just think about the norms that we have in today's modern society. Things like.、Um, Be a well-educated person. Get a good job. Find yourself a partner for marriage.、Um, have kids. Have a good house. What do all of these things have in common? And if you think about it, whenever we assimilate ourselves into these societal norms, that increases spending. All of those things are just. Good for the economy. When you spend money for your own education, when you buy houses, when you when you just have a wife, have kids, you're increasing your spending, and that just makes the economy better. And just think about an unemployed person, uneducated, not married. No friends,、uh, lives in a terrible place. Those kinds of people, they get ostracized from society. They get labeled as failures. And why is that?
that's because they can't spend money because they can't contribute to society with their spending so it's it's all revolved around money and we tend to uh label the success of a person by how much they can spend if you can get yourself a good house if you can support your family by spending all this money that means you're a successful person because you have all that money to spend and that sort of mindset also helps to increase your spending because it forces because people they don't want to be labeled as failures they want to succeed in life and inevitably when you think that way you are contributing towards increase of spending and helping the companies to earn more money that way now what happens to the people who succeed in life who follow these rules that society has in place for us uh, they just think about like marriage friends all of those things uh, in today's modern age uh, companies they start to take advantage of all these societal norms just because people think that if you just because they are societal norms that means people will do those sorts of things for the sake of being labeled as succeeding in life so if you think about marriage a uh, couple hundred years ago 500 600 years ago marriage is just marriage but now in today's modern society uh, there are companies out there who depend on the existence of marriage to make a profit out of it uh, you have wedding photographers people who make wedding cakes wedding venues you suddenly have all of these companies who are trying to capitalize on these societal norms they depend on the existence of marriage they depend on the on the hopes that people will have kids eventually so that they can build kid toys and then sell them to people again uh, they depend on the existence of friend groups uh, so that cinemas can keep uh, cinemas can keep making money tabletop games board games can keep making money online games can keep making money it depends on the fact that people follow these societal norms and that's why all of these all of these companies they try to reinforce these norms they try to force people to follow it more so these societal norms have existed for the past hundreds maybe thousands of years but only very recently are they being uh, sort of taken advantage of in order to make money but that's you know when i'm saying these things i'm saying it like it's a bad thing like like it's it has a negative connotation to it but that's really just how the economy is supposed to work now that we have like the internet and all that modern cool things it's just easier to capitalize on more things and that's just how capitalism works and it's not really wrong it's not really good either it's just how the economy the economy of the world is supposed to work and i guess just one bad thing that i can think about is the one main bad thing i mean there's a lot of bad things but the main bad thing is if you're unnecessarily trying to increase people's spending like the way the economy works nowadays um, you're going to speed up the destruction of the environment and that clearly is bad but then again if you don't make people spend then the 
economy is just going to crash. So it's like we have made a system that depends on people to spend a lot of money. And if that structure falls apart, then everything falls apart. So yeah, we're going to have to, we're going to just have to live with how this all works. Another point that I want to try to make, a uh, final point actually, is the transition of what used to be non-essential goods into becoming essential goods. Now, what are essential goods? These are things like a place to live, food, um, water, clothing, that sort of stuff. Um, and now, if you think of it, recently a lot of products are trying to make their way into the realm of becoming these essential goods and that is also a way in order to earn more money because if you place products if you try to move products which are non-essential into becoming more essential then that means people are forced to spend their money on those things and again companies they earn those and they earn money through that method right now now more than ever uh, we have like a huge bucket of candidates that are trying to make their way into becoming essential goods one of them is uh, electricity wi-fi telephones cars TV, fridge. Now, if you think about the origin of where all these goods come from, you'll realize that they're all products that have been invented in the past 100 or 200 years, maybe. And that coincides with the world as we know it becoming more increasingly capitalistic. Uh, if you think of phones when they were first invented uh, they're just supposed to become they're just supposed to be for businessmen or the government just for important people who are trying to communicate with each other and it lasted that way for a couple of years now suddenly all of that changes when somebody went i think we can make more money out of it but then they're just starting to think here how are we going to get regular people to buy these things? And they're just trying to convince and persuade people into, th into, yeah, they're just trying to convince and persuade people to think of these goods as becoming more essential. And they do this by mass producing it. And that helps uh, to decrease the price of a telephone. And then what you do next is you make the telephone smaller so that you can carry it around in your pockets. And then you can install games on it. You can take photos with it. You can open the calendar and plan your schedule with it. And suddenly it has all of these functionalities. And then regular people, they go, oh, I think I need a phone now. And suddenly of the phone, which just originally be, is of the phone, which is originally used by businessmen and, and important people now becomes an essential good that everybody needs to have. Otherwise, they won't be able to survive in this society. How are you going to call a cab? How are you going to call an ambulance? How are you going to call someone if you need help without a phone? Uh, same thing with Wi-Fi, the internet, same thing with television, uh, laptop, all of those things. They're, they're trying to make it more convenient for people to buy these things by decreasing the price, making it smaller, adding more functionalities that make people think, oh, now I have to buy this. I mean, the price is so low if I, the price is like so cheap. If I have the money, it wouldn't make sense if I don't spend it on these things. It's just these big companies trying to convince people that these are essential 
goods. These are essential items. Uh, although it can't really be considered as such because we can live just fine without these items. But what these big companies do is that they build a world wherein you need these things in order to survive. Uh, so in a way you're being forced to buy these things even if you don't want to because like that's how the world works you can't live without a phone now you can a couple hundred years ago but in today's age if you try to live without a phone that's gonna be really difficult than it was a couple hundred years back and that's the kind of world that we have created a world where all of these goods suddenly become essential so yeah these are just some ideas about yeah just how the the economy works in general and it's honestly really cool and a bit mind-blowing for me the first time I really thought about it and one person who just talks about the same kinds of things is Noam Chomsky uh, if you want to look him up uh, lots of interviews and podcasts if you want to delve deeper into this kind of stuff but yeah it's really cool I think it's nice to understand that the world works this way because not a lot of people are aware of that anyways uh, see you goodbye